You know, I wonder how Tesla would feel if he saw some of the mind-numbing things that people do with electricity nowadays. I mean, from obnoxiously using your phone for everything, to clicking on some random idiot's video on YouTube. It can get so irritating. Anyways, I think I'm gonna build an EMP. EMP is a pretty staple sci-fi concept, and it's used in a lot of different movies, video games, and other various forms of media. However, I assure you, it's certainly a very real thing. For those of you that don't know, EMP stands for Electromagnetic Pulse, and that basically already describes what it is. It's an energy pulse that creates an electromagnetic field so powerful that it can actually disrupt and even destroy other electronics. Keep in mind that anything that runs off electricity creates small electromagnetic forces within its circuits. Therefore, when a powerful enough magnetic field is induced nearby, those magnetic waves are actually going to interfere with the currents that normally occurs within these circuits. It's almost like the wireless equivalent of trying to plug your cell phone or TV into a voltage and a frequency that they simply weren't meant for. This is exactly what sometimes occurs whenever lightning strikes nearby and your lights begin to flicker, or what would happen if a nuclear bomb were to affect a city's power grid. These effects create localized EMP blasts. As much as I want to though, I can't summon lightning strikes, or create nuclear blasts yet. So what methods can one employ to create a similar effect? Dear NSA, if you're watching, please note that this EMP I am creating is for educational purposes only. It is not, and will never be powerful enough to be of a threat to America or her interests. Therefore, an FBI watchlist edition for me will not be necessary. That is assuming, of course, that you haven't already made one. On, th on that note to you, this video, as well as most of my other videos I'll be posting on this channel, are for educational purposes only. I would highly advise against attempting anything you see unless you really know what you're doing. Not only does this project deal with high voltages that could be harmful or even potentially lethal in some cases, but it also deals with very powerful electromagnetic waves. So your best case scenario mistakes would be minor shocks and frying your cell phone. Your worst case scenario mistakes would be more severe shocks, or let's say an unsuspecting individual with a pacemaker walks by, death. So now that we've acknowledged all of the safety concerns that goes into attempting such a stupid project, let's get into the EMP. Now as a quick recap for those of you that already forgot, an EMP is what happens when big electromagnetic forces make other electronic circuits a little drunk. Now I mentioned high voltages a second ago. In order to create this effect, what we're going to do here is we're going to use high voltage and what's called induction in order to create that large electromagnetic force and destroy the phones of annoying people. Serious note, um, don't do that. A quick intro or recap of induction. Induction is the tendency of an inductor to resist a change in electrical current. Now, for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, let's take an electric circuit. Now let's give it a battery that delivers current, what we call an inductor right about here, and let's turn on the circuit current will flow through the circuit, and now let's turn it off. Now that's a little weird. Why didn't the current stop flowing immediately? Well, remember how I just said inductance resists a change in electrical current? That's exactly what happens within the inductor. See, the current change is resisted from whatever current the battery is delivering when it drops to zero. But how can this be? See, in an inductor, when current is flowing in the circuit, it's actually creating an energy field by inducting a magnetic field. This magnetic field is what resists the change in current. So when the current suddenly stops, that magnetic field, which has the stored energy from the electrons, will collapse and convert that magnetic energy back into electrical energy. This keeps the electrons flowing even after the circuit has been turned off but only for a short period of time. This also goes the same for if the current suddenly increases. This is because in order to get through the inductor, the energy that was stored up has to create a bigger magnetic field in order to allow more current to pass. Okay, so we have our methods now. We're going to shove a high voltage current through an inductor. Now, aside from the fact that high current would very easily kill you and make this project more dangerous than it already is, why this is high voltage and not high current is going to make a little more sense later. Plenty of people have already made EMPs also suggesting the same method, dumping a high voltage into a coil in order to induce a magnetic field. However, I see many of these designs falling short of reaching their maximum potential for one reason or another, and the most common reason is pretty prevalent. And I'm no different. In fact, I've already built my own version of an EMP, 
A couple years back, I designed an EMP and built it in the form of an Iron Man style repulsor. It was an awesome build and had plenty of functionality. However, that was two years ago. Now having learned a little bit more, I can spot some major design flaws here. But let's go over the design first before I criticize myself. So you've got this high voltage generator here. This essentially steps up the voltage from these AA batteries to about 10,000 volts more or less. Then the spark gap delivers that voltage to this inductor coil. I gave the inductor coil a ferrite core and put plenty of turns on it. The inductor tries to resist the sudden change in current from the high voltage, and thus releases an EMP by inducing a magnetic field. So back when I designed this thing, I designed it to induce the highest magnetic field possible. And in this context, that makes total perfect sense. The math also checks out pretty well too. As you just saw from the last pictures, an inductor is basically just a bunch of coils of wire. That's what allows electrons to flow through, while also creating a sort of speed bump that stores their energy in the form of a magnetic field. Okay, so just like my previous EMP design, let's take a ferrite core with a high magnetic permeability, and let's put a few copper wire turns around it. This is how pretty much a lot of modern high inductance coils are made nowadays. Now, inductance is typically formulated a little something like this, though there are other variations where n is the number of turns, mu is the magnetic permeability of the core, a is the area of the inductor, and l is the length of the inductor. As you can see, it's directly proportional to those first three, but inversely proportional to that last one, length. So therefore, we want a high number of turns, a high area, and a high magnetic permeability in a very short length. Now, in order to protect the nearby electronics that I value, there is something I need to make before I create the EMP circuit. And if you do intend on creating an EMP as well, I suggest you follow along with this part quite closely. Alright, so in order to contain our EMP blast, we're going to build what's called a Faraday cage. Now, a Faraday cage is essentially a structure that blocks forms of electromagnetic radiation. This is exactly the same kind of structure which helps keep your microwave from emitting in all directions. So how do we build this fancy anti-microwave box? Well, you take some metal mesh, and you make a box. That's pretty much it. See, in a Faraday cage, the conductive metal chosen has charged particles within it. So when an electric field is applied to that metal wall, the charged particles in the metal will create an opposing static field, therefore neutralizing the interior. Or in this case, I suppose the exterior, since we'll be placing the EMP within the interior. So it looks like I've overestimated my ability to build a simple metal box. This Faraday cage really doesn't work that well. There are simply far too many gaps for radiation to leak through. Even after attempting more foolproof designs, I was still getting a signal on my phone. However, I was able to block the signal eventually by wrapping the phone in aluminum foil. This made it easier to close the gaps. The cage did weaken the signal quite a bit. And in my defense, cell phone signals are designed to be powerful nowadays, but I do want the signal to be blocked entirely. Therefore, in the next part, I'll be building a better Faraday cage, as well as starting on my prototype EMP circuits. Alright, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, you know the drill. And if you think you already know exactly where my last EMP design fails, feel free to comment down below. I'll see you next time.